FTX was the institutional liquidity provider. Um, and so big institutions, you know, we lost 4% of our equity. And so we can certainly survive that. We've got a billion dollars of cash and a billion and a half dollars of liquidity. Uh, it pisses me off, but, but it's not going to knock us out of the, uh, the game. But I have other counterparties that have lost 30% or 40%. And, you know, institutions run with leverage, institutions run with high cost rates. And so I think in some ways it's, this is a lot worse to the infrastructure that was being built up for people to buy, sell, lend, and, and promote coins. Um, and so it will be a setback. It doesn't end crypto by any stretch in the same way I said yesterday, web band didn't end the Internet. American investor and chief executive officer of Galaxy Investment Partners, Mike Novogratz, has joined the list of leading industry figures that have reacted to news of the FTX collapse. Last week, word quickly spread of the exchange's impending collapse when Binance chief executive officer Changping Zhao confirmed that his crypto exchange was liquidating its remaining FTT tokens. According to the Chinese-Canadian business executive, the move was because of recent revelations that came to light. The tweet started a chain of events that resulted in the troubled exchange and over 130 affiliated companies filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in the United States. Sam Bankman-Fried, the once-celebrated chief executive officer, also resigned from the position and had his multi-billion dollar empire reduced to nothing. While it is yet to be proven in any law court, several leading industry figures and millions of investors, clients and others impacted by the collapse are certain that this is a case of fraud and should be punishable by a long jail term. In his interview with CNBC, Novogratz discusses his opinions about the collapse and how it affects his firm and the cryptocurrency industry as a whole. Please watch the video to the end, share it with others, and hit the like button. We are still trying to reach 200,000 subscribers by year end. So if you aren't subscribed, please do and ensure you turn on post notifications so you never miss any of our videos. You can also drop your comments and observations in the comments section below to help this video reach more viewers. Thanks and enjoy. Yeah, listen, macro guys, uh, don't stay angry long. We try to be rational. Um, and so... Uh, this is bad for the uh, the system, like, period, right? There's The whole system is built on trust. All finance is built on trust. And we had a trusted counterparty for lots of people that turned out to be uh, something that, you know, wasn't advertised. Um, yesterday I mentioned it felt like Elizabeth Holmes or Theranos, and it, it very much does feel like that for, you know, employees of his own organization to investors to counterparties. And so... While it's, in some ways, the economic impact is less than three arrows, uh, Celsius, blocked by that, that first wave, in that wave, you know, unfortunately for, for the small guy, most of those losses were retail depositors, and lots of them, losing $10,000, $4,000, $50,000, 200000 but it was tons of losses spread out amongst lots of people. Bitcoin, Ethereum have big, diverse communities. Uh, there are a ton of people working on cool projects. Uh, there is capital that wants to come into the space. And usually, you know, these events, uh, when there's blood on the streets, is somewhere close to buying opportunities. And so is it today? Is it in a month? Is it in two months? Um, there will be a buying opportunity in, in, in Bitcoin, Ethereum, and in building this new you know, economic infrastructure. I've been talking about that for a while. I think we're gonna we're gonna go into two different buckets. You're gonna have centralized places that live under regulatory regimes. I mean, you know, we're regulated. I'm a Canadian listed company. You know, I came out instantly and said we have seventy seven million dollars. There's no lack of transparency. This is our cash position, this is our earnings. And so our counterparties that we're trying to build trust with can look at audited financials and realize that if I lie, I'm going to jail. You know uh, the unregulated, uh, centralized, you know, businesses, and we've seen a lot of them, you know, got up to a lot of uh, shenanigans. Uh, on-chain is completely, you know, the DeFi on-chain protocols are completely transparent. The beauty of it is completely transparent. What has stopped its explosive growth has been when you're trading on those exchanges, you're not positive who your counterparty is. And so if you take KYC and AML seriously, uh, there's a reticence to, to use it. I, I need to trust who I'm using it with. Right. And so there are a lot of new technologies. You know, we invested in Sealand. 
that are working on taking on chain analytics and making that possible. Right. And I would bet in the next couple of years, you're going to see DeFi really take off. In a recent interview with Bloomberg, Larry Summers, former U.S. Secretary of the Treasury, described the FTX collapse as an Enron moment, not a lemon one like many people believe. The Enron scandal involved the bankruptcy and accounting scandal of Houston-based energy company Enron Corporation in October 2001. Kenneth Lay, the corporation's founder, developed a staff of executives that used accounting loopholes and poor financial reporting to hide billions of dollars of debt from failed deals and projects. The scandal is hailed as one of the largest bankruptcy reorganizations and the biggest audit failure in the history of the United States. It was so huge that it destroyed its accounting firm, Arthur Anderson, cutting down the big five accounting firms to today's big four. In contrast, Lehman Brothers went bankrupt due to its involvement in the subprime mortgage crisis, later triggering the 2008 financial crisis. Here is a clip from Summers about the crash and another from Brian Armstrong, the chief executive officer of Coinbase. But a lot of people have compared this to Lehman. I would compare it to uh, Enron, the uh, smartest guys uh, in the room, not just financial error, but certainly from the reports, uh, whiffs of uh, fraud, stadium namings very early in a company's uh, history, vast explosion of wealth that nobody quite understands uh, where it comes from. I think the regulatory community ought to draw two lessons from this. One, if we had a few fewer economists and quants and a few more forensic accountants running around, I think it would help us uh, detect what was going on in countries and in uh, companies. The more I watch, the more that field of forensic accounting seems to me important. And the other is, I think we ought to have a rule in everything that touches finance, that everyone who has anything to do with it in a position of responsibility has to be entirely away from the office, away from their phone. I think it's, my guess is it's a little more like Enron in the sense that, I mean, yes, they were over levered and that kind of thing, but the minute that they moved customer funds in some way, shape or form to backstop the hedge fund, that, that was in my mind, fraud, and, you know, that's more like Enron. The FTX collapse has claimed yet another victim, according to the co-founder of Gala West Capital, Kevin Zhao. The hedge fund manager who predicted the Terra collapse recently sent a letter to investors stating that he was deeply sorry and explaining that half of the hedge fund's capital is stuck on FTX. I am deeply sorry that we find ourselves in this current situation, Joe stated in his letter. We will work tirelessly to maximize our chances of recovering stuck capital by any means. He also noted that Galois had a tone of open positions that had to close because of the FTX collapse. What are your thoughts on these reactions to the FTX collapse? Do you think this will turn into a full-blown contagion within the coming week? Let us know what you think in the comments section below. Also, ensure you hit the like button. If you are new to the channel, please subscribe, turn on post notifications, and check out our other crypto-related videos. Everything you do helps with the YouTube algorithm and contributes to the channel's growth. Thanks for watching.